series, guys. Today we have Anupam Mittal, who needs no introduction, founder of Shadi.com. A lot of you guys who are watching this might have been married because of this man here. So let's start off immediately. I've known Anupam for a while now. In fact, it's uh, been some time, and uh, he's always mesmerized me whenever I've seen him on stage with his witty questions at the events or wherever I met him. So Anupam, let me start with you with the first question. What is the one truth you believe most people disagree with you? Yeah, you know, uh, that is, I think, Peter Thiel's uh, uh, rather popular interview question, if I'm not mistaken. But it's a great question, nevertheless. And uh, I think uh, what I believe is that there are a lot of truths out there uh, waiting to be discovered. And if you talk to most people, they'll tell you that, look, everything that had to be discovered is already done. And there's not a whole lot left. But I think, you know, there's uh, truth hiding in plain sight, as they say. And we are so conditioned, uh, you know, socially, uh, that we grow up believing a lot of stuff that uh, that is not true. Uh, so, so putting it another way, the truths that we think are true are not necessarily true. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. It's too deep now. People will like really yeah. go deep. <laughs> Take digital now for an, into account, right? I think that brings it front and center. <laughs> if you <laughs> realize all of a sudden you're seeing it play out in front of you, uh, one day you hear a certain story, right? And uh, the next day, uh, there are fact checkers who tell you it's not true. And there's a way for you to verify whether it's true or not. And so, you know, to some degree, you can start to separate fake news from uh, real news. But if you think about it from a historical perspective, right, Ramesh, uh, we don't know what is true and what's not. We listen to, uh, we study history. Uh, and, and we assume it's true, but history is, you know, as they say, uh, history is the narrative of the victorious. There's a whole different side to it. The person who lost has a whole different story, but you'll never hear it. So many of our historical records are simply propaganda. I'm talking about digital, uh, Anupam, in this pandemic, everybody was exposed to digital and a lot of people have nothing to do. So do you think that was like a boon for you because Shadi.com really had a uptick in people coming in registering, looking for match <laughs> I think what we saw during the pandemic is a lot of people found a lot of time on their hands yeah. and, uh, and there was a massive surge in engagement. So we saw engagement go up by 30-40%. We saw a lot of users from tier 2 and smaller towns which we had not seen before. So I just think that people found themselves with a lot of time and they said, you know, let's try this, whatever you got to lose. And once they came on the side, they realized, now wait a second, this is not a typical, you know, arranged marriage platform. This is more of a planned relationship or planned marriage platform. And so they took to it. And some of those gains have been sustaining even after the pandemic. So we're pretty happy with the way it turned out. What are your leadership mantras? Look, I think the most important one is that you have to lead by example. Uh, I think, uh, unfortunately, and I see this more in India than I saw in the West. I lived in the West for 10 years. <clears throat> but India, because we have so many class systems, that a lot of times we start assuming, and I don't blame anyone, it happens just because of conditioning and experiences. A lot of times we start assuming that the rules that apply to us may not uh, to others don't necessarily apply to us. And I think that's a big uh, uh, shortcoming uh, in terms of our leadership. Uh, I think what's very important to understand and invite, particularly in new age companies where there's a lot of young people who are no longer simply going to fly, follow you blindly, is that you must set the right example. So whatever rules you set for your organization, the same rules must apply to you. So you cannot be coming into office at 11 o'clock expecting others to show up at nine. Uh, you know, you can't be sort of uh, 
you know, uh, measuring yourself by a different yardstick. So I think that's the first uh, uh, first lesson that one learns. Uh, the second one is that leadership has to be about learning. Right? Leadership cannot be about dictating. Uh, you know, and this is sort of, again, perhaps true for a lot of younger people who find themselves in leadership positions. And because of the pressure on them, a lot of times they assume that uh, leadership means that I cannot show my weakness, so I cannot expose myself, or I cannot be vulnerable. Uh, I think that's a big mistake. I think leadership is about being humble and being vulnerable and uh, accepting that uh, just because you're in a position to lead others doesn't mean that you're not human. I think the more you let people in, the more vulnerable you are, uh, you find that uh, you get that much more respect as a leader. There are so many, right? I mean, all of them point to one or two things, which is really about hard work and perseverance. I don't know if you ever heard, I mean, this is a really long one, so I don't even remember it uh, fully, but uh, Roosevelt had a very nice saying about, you know, it's not the critic who counts and not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles, but it's the person who's the doer, the person who actually is in the battlefield with sweat and blood and grime on their face because you know when they're victorious they know what it takes to 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 meet, take to win but even if they fail right uh, they know that they did so while trying valiantly and uh, and they should you know never rest with the timid but uh, uh, but really come out fighting. So I think it's a, it's a longish quote. I don't remember it all, but that's the gist of it. I think the, the point of the quote is that, look, uh, and this is something that's written in our Gita as well, right? So I, I kind of draw a lot of lessons from the Gita. And this is a contemporary way of uh, sort of characterizing the one of the key messages in the Gita, which is you don't look, uh, you don't fight for the fruit, right? Uh, you, you fight uh, regardless of what, what you know, defeat and victory is not in your hands, right? But the greatness lies in the fight. And credit goes to the people who get down to the battlefield and fight every day. And I think that's the key lesson in life as well. It's not about reaching a certain stage, switching off and saying, oh, I've arrived. It's about waking up every day, going to battle every day. You run a business, you, know, you run a media company, right? How many times have you thought, Oh, I launched this magazine and then everything is done just to discover that you just started another journey and you have to go all over again every day. Right? Okay. Uh, so I think it's just like the boxer, right? After every round, you have to keep coming back to the next round. After every bout, you have to go to the next bout. Uh, so I think uh, that's a key lesson that I take away, which inspires me quite a bit. It's very amusing, you know, because I've been meeting a lot of people and uh, you won't believe that so many people have told me that Gita is so important. Like, I'm talking about, I, I can give you a lot of names right now, we've done interviews. So many people have the same thing that, you know, they all draw their inspiration from Gita. It's really very interesting because yeah, I don't know, I don't even know that people who are actually start up and MBK, they even read it because they think that <laughs> Gita is like thousand centuries before what is there in Gita. But guys, this is, you heard from the man, so just go and take a look at the Gita. Let me put another twist to it. You don't go looking for the Gita. The Gita finds you. So I have never actually sat down many years back and read the Gita. It is when you go through life's experiences that you remember the lessons that the Gita taught you as a child or you know, as you flip through some verses or maybe you read a small book somewhere and that you kind of put in the back of your mind. But Life just brings it front and center, and at some point you have no choice but to embrace it. What are the other two, three leadership books that you want to recommend or you keep rereading it? Yeah, I think one of the books that maybe, uh, you know, only the last chapter perhaps matters at this point, but there was a book that I read in uh, <clears throat> 1995, and that book was called Vision 2020. And if you actually read through that book, and actually it's very relevant even today because it gives you a very systematic way, approach of understanding the information in the digital economy. Right? And everything that the book laid out that would happen from 1995 
onwards into the 21st century has unfolded exactly the way they had very much alike the way they had kind of predicted so i just find it fascinating i read that book every few years again and again and uh you know the lessons are just uh, uh just incredible steve jobs autobiography again a fascinating book uh you know so, so several such books that i draw inspiration from do you read it on audio uh, or as an audio book or do you read it like reading do you get time to read book physically yeah i've been trying this audio thing and i keep going back to it every few months and trying it again <clears throat> but i'm a very visual person so okay. i find that the audio thing sort of is Excellent. okay but i think yeah it, it sort of doesn't sink in very well with me uh, okay. when i read I, i'm just i think it's different for different people i'm just more visual so when i read things i remember them more than i do when i listen to them right anupam in this pandemic i mean we all have gone through the life part of life which nobody will ever go again so what has been your learnings like as an individual from your team point of view from every aspect that you know i think the biggest thing that i'm most amazed with and my big learning right and now it sort of tells you why human beings are the most powerful species on this planet and the reason is our, our ability to adapt i am just so incredibly amazed at the speed with which as human beings have adapted to this lockdown adapted our lives to the new reality adopted digital technologies and i'm not just talking about young people i'm talking about young and old the second thing i think for me from an organizational standpoint sometimes there's nothing better than a crisis to bring people together and i'm just again amazed at how well our teams came together and uh and really some of the best months for our business were april may and june and it was not just because people had more time it was also because of the way our teams reacted and responded to what had just happened right a lot of people were like deer caught in headlights in terms of not knowing what to do and they went into survival mode and we actually because we've been through a similar crisis in 2008 we realized very early on that if we do things correctly this is a huge opportunity from a business standpoint right i don't want to be little uh, the tragedy that it, that this is and and most certainly it, it, it's terrible in terms of what's happened to humanity and the number of deaths it has caused but just looking at purely from a capitalistic standpoint and from an organizational standpoint we recognized very early on that this could be an opportunity for our business and so we responded very quickly and very positively and that's kept us uh, you know that was our best quarter ever in fact uh, why i was smiling was because i was just thinking uh, when the pandemic happened people must have thought we will die one day might as well get married yeah <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, it's on the light of note, guys. Anupam is a happily married <laughs> man, so a man's no problem. Yes, if we marry, then of course. Anupam, up, you've been investing in startups, and you know you've been mentoring some of them. So, who, which startup has really done very good, or how has been your experience? Are you still looking to? You know, looking at any sectors that you're going to put your money behind, or you know, are you planning something next for the yeah. Shahidrakhan? What next? Basically? Well, I mean, what next? We can look at it from a couple of different angles. One is just from a startup investing. Look, I really enjoy it. I love meeting young entrepreneurs, learning from them, investing behind them. Because you know, one thing it keeps me young. One thing it keeps me in touch with technology, and uh, and so I would, you know, I I will continue doing that. <clears throat> I like to invest in things that are a little crazy crazy when they when you first hear of them that are a little out there so I've invested in you know uh, a space tech company I've invested in uh, a company that automates uh trading strategy using artificial intelligence I've invested in a stealth sort of uh farmer agri economy company recently 
you know, all of these companies are models are pretty much businesses that a lot of people would be surprised with because they don't exist today and, and you're creating them really from nothing. And, uh, and there's no precedent, right? It's easy to imagine something or to uh, extrapolate something from a precedent, but it's very hard to be the first to do something. So I like those kind of businesses and I'll continue to invest in sectors and entrepreneurs who are, uh, you know, pushing the envelope, so to speak. Well, Bob, that was a very, very great conversation. I seriously enjoyed it. I'm sure the guys who are watching this will get inspired. Anupam, you have been really a role model in the entrepreneurship. As I mean it, I mean, you know, you've really been there, done that. A simple idea of Shadi.com, which was like, can this happen? You made it a reality. It's amazing. And now that you are nurturing the startups in the country, it's again a great thing. Now, on this point, I just want to ask you a couple of things because a lot of startups will be watching this. Uh, when they come to pitch you, what is it that really makes or breaks it? Look, I think, you know, we all go through the motions of uh, market size, opportunity, and so on and so forth. Uh, <clears throat> for me, you know, I want to see a couple of things that uh, sort of help me make a decision. One is a very important att attribute uh, that is often overlooked when it comes to entrepreneurship, particularly in India, and that is perseverance. Uh, I like missionary entrepreneurs who have a 10-year, 20-year vision. And for that, you need perseverance. In India, it takes three times as long as it takes in the West to build a company. Uh, and uh, unless and until you are ready to dedicate a big part of your life to doing that, it's going to be very hard to succeed. Sure, it's possible that you know, uh, every now and then you'll see a company that uh, from founding to exit is a year, 18 months, 24 months. But that's more the exception, not the rule. <clears throat> and given my journey itself has been so long, I like entrepreneurs who demonstrate grit, determination and most importantly, perseverance. Super, Manupa. It was wonderful catching up. Cheers. Okay, buddy. Take care. Bye. -bye. Bye. See you.